Heels in tech, we are back on Bella Weekend and we are still discussing the topic about our feet. And with me, I'm joined by our expert who flew in from Singapore. He's a very, very busy man, so I'm so, so honoured that you are here with us. Dr. Mark Renneker, is that right? Yes, uh, that's right. Chief thank Podiatrist you. and Managing Director for Family Podiatry Centre. Good afternoon and thank you for joining us Good on the afternoon. show. Good afternoon, thank you for having me. First and foremost, did you know that honestly, a lot of people out there, including myself, think that when you have um, you know, foot problems, you automatically go and see the orthopedic, but you go and see the podi a podiatrist, right? Like right, yourself. Right, the podiatrist is that member of the healthcare team mm -hmm. who focuses specifically on your legs and your feet okay. with a, very, a lot of special attention paid to the function of the foot. So what are some of the common problems that you've seen or you've uh, gone through with uh, women out there? What, what, what do they come in, uh, come in to see you about, the complaints? Depending on the age group. So if we're oh. looking at our, our, um, our children mm -hmm. and then later on if we're looking at our early adults and our um, uh, after 40, 50, 60, each group or each decade presents with a different set of problems. Mm -hmm. Reason being that lifestyle is different things they get involved in different so your working person mm -hmm. in their um, early to late 20s right. uh, will be wearing different types of shoes compared to someone later on so the problems we see are oftentimes very very different oh okay so it really really depends and uh, different cases just really are very uh, different in that sense yes. you're saying right okay um, we went on um, taking we took a look at some of the comments on our Bella and TV 7 fan page and we asked our um, our fans out there, wearing heels for a long period of time can cause all sorts of aches and pains. What are some uncommon pains that you face when wearing heels? And these are some of the comments. Stabbing my foot or legs with the bottom of my heel while dancing. Uh, yeah, my ankle, my ankle pain will call, uh, will be, okay, will pain. That means she's in pain because I'm wearing about four to five inches heel, but it does make me feel confident with my look. Uh, another one says, I've got a lot of back aches, knee aches. I wonder how some wa ladies can wear those high heels for hours. Um, most of them actually have given their comments here saying that they've be they feel a lot of pain on the soles and on the toe mo what's his mounds? Mo molds, as well as the weight is there followed by the ankle. Right. Okay. Right. So, you know, as much as we love, love, love yeah. our stilettos, yeah. wearing it for a long duration of time is bad for our feet, right? Well, if you just allow me to explain the basic physics of uh, foot function. Mm -hmm. This being your shin bone, and okay. this is a right foot. And then, of course, we've got the rest of the body attached to this. Okay. If you're standing and your weight travels down onto the foot, it's mm -hmm. distributed in a ratio of about 2 to 1. Yeah. Right? So uh, two, t two uh, parts of your body weight is carried in this thicker stronger area and you can see the bones in this part of the foot are very very strong they're robust you've got the heel the talus all these bones are very solid mm -hmm. the other half in the front mm -hmm. the bones are sort of very slim thin looking mm -hmm. if you compare the two that's right so it makes sense for most of the weight to be carried at the back mm -hmm. so the dynamics of your foot weight distribution changes dramatically once you start adding on heels so what the research shows is that once you go up um, about that much, which okay. is about an inch, inch and a half to two inches. Mm -hmm. The changes are not that dramatic, but once we go up any higher, uh, okay, and our foot now starts to do it. that, right, and we're on the ball of our feet, so now our weight will be distributed unevenly. Mm -hmm. So instead of the ratio of two to one, mm -hmm. two where in the area where the bones can handle it, it's all distributed to the front where your metatarsal heads get that full load, mm -hmm. and that's why the dynamics of your foot function changes completely. Okay, yeah. and that is the reason. Now that you actually show it, <laughs> and yeah. seeing the bone structure and stuff, now we understand the pain and how much stress we're putting onto the balls of our feet as opposed to putting it where it should be at. Right. So, but you're not completely saying that, you know, you shouldn't be wearing high heels at all. No. Uh, not what, not are, not. what are some of your, uh, your tips on those ladies out there who love wearing stilettos, but yeah. You know, if we look at the history of footwear, why do we wear shoes? Mm -hmm. If you go back a couple of thousand years, what you'll find is that footwear on cavemen that were um, excavated was that it's all leather, it's wraps, mm -hmm. it's um, things pushed in to protect the foot from the cold weather mm -hmm. or from the harsh uh, surrounding climate. It was all about protection. Yeah. And as time has passed, it's, it's changed. As our technology and our, our, our society has changed, the surfaces we walk on has changed, now shoe wear plays a different role. It's no longer yeah. about protecting us from the environment, now it's about looking good, feeling confident. Um, as one of the uh, Facebook comments said, it's mm -hmm. all about that confidence. 
that it builds up in a woman and how it makes you look. Mm -hmm. And so um, when it comes to wearing it, we mm -hmm. don't, it's not all doom and gloom. Hey, it's bad for you, stop <laughs> wearing it. It's more about how do you use it. Okay. So there's a certain way to use it. So if you're going to a wedding, for example, and mm -hmm. you'll be wearing, being dressed a certain way, you'll be there for a couple of hours, it's once in perhaps a, a, a blue moon. Yeah. And so you wear your heels, you'll be okay. Yeah, it's not you'll like the end of the world yes. automatically. Yes, you'll survive. Right. So as long as you perhaps do a little bit of training in them beforehand, <laughs> if That's you're going true. up into the five to seven inch range and some of the shoes I've seen, then um, it's okay. But generally then for work, you would, there are ways around it. Meetings, you can always slip into your very formal high heel shoe. Mm -hmm. For um, other types of activities around the office, you may take your high heel shoes off. Oh. when it's not necessary, mm -hmm. behind your desk, for example. So you can use them in a smart way. Just remember that you shouldn't be spending a full day mm -hmm. in those heels. Now, just when you think that, you know, you should not be wearing your stilettos or your high heels all the way, uh, you, you think that wearing the flat shoes would be a safer choice. It's not so, and he's going to be explaining that in just a bit. But in the meantime, before yeah. that, let's take a look at some of the box spots, some of um, uh, what the viewers out there have uh, responded to. What are some of, how do they choose their shoe wear? Let's take a look. Comfort, of course. It's more to style. <laughs> I think it's according to style come first and then uh, second is comfort of the shoes. Style. <laughs> Usually comfort first but um, if it's ugly I'm not going to wear it either so yeah. <laughs> Oh, wow. So that's what some people were telling us on how they choose their shoe wear. Now, we've got a couple of shoes um, here in front of us. Um, earlier on, we said that, you know, wearing stilettos or wearing high heels for a long period of time can put a bit of stress into your feet. So occasionally you can. It's not as if it's a major no-no whatsoever. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, you should change it with something that is, you know, maybe your flats and stuff. Mm -hmm. But I also read somewhere that wearing something completely flat is also just as bad, right? Right, right. Okay. So it, it, it depends a lot on the structure of the shoe so yeah I have um, a shoe mm -hmm. which is very very common when you walk around outside you'll see people wear this more than people wear high heels mm -hmm. flats are very fashionable you also get ballet flats which are normally curved like yeah. that but what these shoes when you talk about uh, completely flat what we look at is we would look at the shoe from this angle all right and look at the foundation of the shoe okay right so if uh -huh. you look at the foundation of the shoe you'll see that the heel is a lot smaller okay. than the top of the shoe. All right. So what that immediately tells you that the shoe is not resting on a stable foundation, it's narrower. Mm -hmm. The shoes, the last is normally narrower than your foot. Mm -hmm. And so your foot will be a lot wider than this, so there's a lot of wobbling going on. So if you are walking on uneven surfaces, you have no stability whatsoever. Oh wow, I didn't know that, okay. Very, very flat heels. If you even take this completely off, mm -hmm. um, our feet, if you look at the foot design, it never came with a heel. Mm -hmm. It has a heel bone, but it's not elevated. It is completely flat. So if you were to walk around barefooted for a certain amount of time, it's fine. But it depends on what environment. So what researchers have shown is that if you look at the design of the foot, mm -hmm. it's designed to move on a, without any shoe on softer surfaces. So if you want grass, if you want sand, natural surfaces mm -hmm. your foot can conform to that it loves that it can move and function really really well okay put it into a environment that we've designed mm -hmm. flat marble mm -hmm. hard concrete shopping mall tiles etc those are unnatural surfaces so walking completely with a shoe that has no cushioning and completely flat mm -hmm. tends to stress the heel out and a lot of the muscles that support the foot Okay. Because it's not designed for that. That's, that's um, now, now I understand it clearer because uh, my daughter actually has a pronated foot, if I'm not mistaken. Right. And um, she's encouraged to wear her shoes inside because we've got the marble flooring yes. and stuff. Um, but how about for wooden floors? Because it's natural, but it's also hard. And how True. about that? So ba basically, if you look out into the environment, you won't find any surface that mm. extends for a big area that's mm -hmm. completely flat. Okay. And so even though the wood is natural, its flatness is not. Mm -hmm. Right, so it, it, it's softer, mm -hmm. um, but it is still flat. So the foot 
goes through, in fact, there's, there's some, a school of thought and some research that shows that the foot could roll over or pronate even more Ooh. without any problem right. on a harder surface. Well, we in this Asian culture, we live in the culture where we don't wear shoes inside the house. Right. Uh, do you then advise us, um, especially young children out there who are prone to this little problem, to wear at least, you know, there's bedroom slippers? Yes. So that you don't hit the cold straight away? Do you, do right. You, yeah. So we encourage people to wear some sort of uh, shoe that's cushioned. It doesn't have to have a very high built-in arch mm -hmm. or any support. But uh, given the amount of activity that you do in the house, um, where it's a little bit of standing here, it's sitting down most of the time, perhaps mm -hmm. walking upstairs, downstairs, small little chores around the house, that's a minimum amount of time on your feet. So just to wear something that's soft, mm -hmm. nicely cushioned, a pair of slippers, a simple one, that will do. That's fine. Yeah. Okay, and how about sports shoes, choosing sports shoes and um, uh, sensible shoes that you can, you know, use for an everyday wear? What would you recommend? If it comes to sports shoes, sports shoes is a whole huge area. I know, it's and crazy. It's, it, is, it is so <laughs> difficult to choose shoes. And, and um, when it comes to sports shoes, the problems we find most of the time, um, especially running shoes in particular, is the size. Mm -hmm. Ladies tend to fit their shoes too small. Oh. Men tend to fit their shoes too big. Oh dear. This is just an observation, a clinical observation. So it's very interesting. And we can probably go into a little bit more detail to find out why. But yeah. uh, I, I think that on the women's side, um, as to why their shoes are, are, are smaller is because most of the shoes that you buy, especially that you would wear here, would be sandals, open shoes. Mm -hmm. And those have to be just fit. Yep. If you bought an, a, a sandal with a little bit of extra space for the toe, a little bit of extra space here, it will probably slip off while That's you're right. walking. So they just fit and you kind of get used to that. So when you buy your clothes shoe, mm -hmm. you tend to buy it with the same principles. And that's where you make the mistake. Snug. Correct. Mm. And that's where you make the mistake because oh. that's where it pushes up against the toes. Okay. And some of the very, very common problems we see is that the toes tend to do that. They oh. will curl up like that as the shoe presses it them like that because that our foot so swells. Gruesome, yeah, right, right. Our foot swells during the day. It's uh -huh. its largest by 12, 1 o'clock after we've been standing a lot. And if there's no space in the shoe to accommodate that, mm -hmm. your foot gets crumpled up. Is that the problem that Victoria Beckham has? I know, um, I can't remember, I was reading one magazine where she, yeah, she, see, they're laughing, they're laughing, but it's true, right? Where she, she's always in her Louboutins and she looks absolutely stunning in them, but yeah. it's, it's really caused so much pain to her right. feet and really looks like, what is that? It's a, it's a, I'm it's not like, exactly sure what she's it, suffering it was, from. Yeah, it was like I do really know that her husband also has a problem. Oh, wow. Yeah, and I'll he wears special orthotics inside his boots, but mm -hmm. um, her problems I'm not so uh, 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 clued up on. But mm -hmm. what I do know is that um, if you look at a ballerina's foot, for example, because mm -hmm. the shoe that they wear has to be just, just fit, many of them will have these knobbly sort yep. of toes, which they think is normal because it's been like that for all the years they've mm -hmm. been doing it. And many ladies' sh uh, toes, when they take their shoes off, will mm -hmm. see that presentation. The big toe could be slightly skew, mm -hmm. the toe could be slightly bent, slightly, and mm -hmm. you'll have these little hard skin. And oftentimes people think that's normal, mm -hmm. but it's not. And they only realize really in their later 40s when pain starts to creep in I because see. of these problems. Yeah. That's strange because, you know, having, being a ballerina, you've got the posture and, you know, and everything, but it's still quite damaging to the feet. Can it be cured, though, Doctor? I mean, if, if one were to have those, what do you call it, the, the, one, the ones where the, the bones Depending actually... at what age we get it. So the idea mm, here tricky. is to catch everything, any deformity or anything that we see as mm -hmm. early as possible. When should a woman come to you, or when should a patient come to you and realize, oh, I think I may have foot problems? Well, with the human body, mm -hmm. your red light, your signal is pain. Okay. And um, pain is really the signal. So if you feel any discomfort, my ankle hurts whenever mm -hmm. I wear a two and a half inch or um, whenever I wear these flats, my, my heel feels uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. Pain is not normal. So as soon okay. as you get that and you see, notice you're getting it more than once, you're getting it a couple of times, mm -hmm. then you need to probably have it checked up. Start so tracking it, but you know how they sometimes have all these inserts for shoes, right. uh, those party slip-ons so that, you know, it won't, you know when you're sweaty and stuff, it, 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 it basically prevents you from slipping off and stuff. Right. How, um, how helpful are these and, and are they doing you any good or is it actually doing more harm to your feet? They can be helpful. Okay. Um, they are ones that have cushion at the Those bottom, cushion soles, they'll have right? cushions over yeah. here, they'll have separate ones that you can slide over your toe perhaps, mm -hmm. and they'll have different types of paddings. Yes, they are helpful mm -hmm. in that they prevent friction pressure on the foot. So for that short period of time, if you are wearing your high heels and you pad it on certain areas, that's okay. Mm -hmm. But 
need, having to pad a shoe should tell you something about that shoe. Okay, that's yeah. that's fair enough. I like that smile there you yeah. got. And we've got these two pair of shoes um, here. Perhaps you'd like to tell us a little bit more about this. Is this a safe height if one would like to, you know? Some people just cannot live without their heels. So. Right. Yeah, is this a, a better option? Or these, so? these, these shoes that I decided to bring along um, was just to illustrate a safer type of high heel shoe mm -hmm. for um, if you're in a job, for example, where you don't have a choice. Right. High heel shoes are what you need to wear. Then you need to go for shoes that are very, very stable. So some of the things I can suggest is that if you hold a shoe here yeah. and you hold it over there, mm -hmm. there should be something down here that prevents it from twisting. Oh. So if you hold it there and you twist it, oh, it should okay. be sturdy. Wow. So this part is flexible, super uh -huh. flexible, Okay. but you need sturdiness side to side. So you need that stability because we're raising the foot up, we're distributing your weight to the front, mm -hmm. you're unstable. Okay. So now we're going to try and stabilize you. So we stabilize you by making sure this is stiff, mm -hmm. this is closed and firm, mm -hmm. and preferably a strap across the top. Wow, that is quite and a... These three. Shopping for shoes <laughs> yeah. has gone from leaps and bounds now that you've given, yes. educated me on this. How about wedges, though? Because mm -hmm. I find, you know, wearing wedges a little bit more comfortable, or platform shoes, because they, they elevate you, but at the same time, they're not so... They don't put so much pressure. But what, what, what's your views on this? Right. Many women do find them better because, as we mentioned earlier on, talking about the foundation of the shoe, that if it's wider mm -hmm. and supports your foot from the bottom, then it makes you more stable. So okay. most people will respond well to that. But uh, the problem with some wedges is that they have no flexibility oh. in the front. Ah. So Ooh. the platform types where you're making it thicker, they have no flexibility. So you want to re remember that you need flexibility there. The wedge can fall within this area. Okay, where That's the arch fine. is, all right. Right, and before the forefoot starts. Mm -hmm. So you want that flexible, you want the wedge falling into this area. And then the more straps that you have, the more strappy the shoe, mm -hmm. like for example with this one, mm -hmm. one, two, three, four, strap at the back, strap all over, holding the foot <laughs> in, then we've got stability. Right. Right, so um, that's what you're looking for, mm -hmm. to hold the foot in. So a single strap in the front, entire shoe open in the back is a problem. Ooh. Yeah. My husband's going to be very pleased with this interview because there's a lot of no-no <laughs> shoes out there that I absolutely love, but it has yeah. a lot of, you know, it causes a lot of harm. But then again, it's okay. I'm not saying completely go and throw away your right. whole shoe right. collection, but yeah, make sure that there's always moderation in yes. uh, what you choose to wear for the day. Right. And always have a pair of flats somewhere nearby. Yes. Yes. Okay. Now, any last words of advice for our viewers at home there with regards to choosing the right footwear and, you know, getting help when, when you know, the time comes so that, you know, they can prevent from having more back pains and aches and pains um, towards end, you know, when, when, as they age? Well, I'd like to advise all women to have a look at their wardrobe and have a look at all their shoes and perhaps take a couple off that they wear on a frequent basis, lay mm -hmm. them out, right. um, put your foot onto a piece of paper, okay. draw an outline of your foot, cut that out with the scissors. Oh, wow. Okay. And then you have basically the width of your foot with you standing. And then take that and see if you can slide that into any one of your shoes as you go along. The, the cutout. The cutout. Okay. And see whether it can go in without being really crammed in oh, or whether it can fit. Now, it doesn't have to fit completely but see whether you can at least get it and that will give you an indication what does that shoe mm -hmm. do to my foot because oftentimes the leathers in the front could be hard and you can't see what's going on mm -hmm. so you put on a shoe it feels great mm -hmm. but you don't really see what's going on so mm -hmm. this will be a good way for you to see if the paper comes out crumpled yeah next shoe test it actually now that you've already told me all this maybe I like you a little bit more because now I can go and find out what, the, what shoes I can throw up because it's bad for me and I can go shoe shopping again. <laughs> well, there you go. <laughs> there you go. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Ma. Now, for as sure. promised, um, we are giving away three pairs of a Zaf collection. Hmm. The word for this block is podiatrist. There you go. Podiatrist is the block, uh, the name of the uh, word of the day for this block. Once again, thank you so much to Dr. Ma. That was very informative indeed. Um, I love it, love it, love it. It's not always what we see. It's, it's, it's okay. There's always moderation, basically. And once you feel pain, go and see your podiatrist. Not your orthopedic, but your podiatrist. Podiatrist. Off some some. Okay, then. And have a safe trip flight back to Singapore today. Thank you. Tomorrow. Yes. Uh, two days time. <laughs> okay then. All right then. Thank you. <laughs> okay, we're going to go for another quick break here on Bella Weekend, but do stay tuned. We have more coming up your way. <laughs>